For this section, we advance the theory of linear inequalities from the previous section to compound inequalities. Now, in the previous section, we considered okay, subsets of the real number line in these forms. We had x less than b. We translated that to mean x to the left of b. So what we would do is we would mark off b here with an open circle since less than and then shade in everything to the left. We also looked at x greater than a, or all x to the right of a. So here we would mark off a, and then shade in everything to the right. And both of these would give us half of the real line. Now, question is, with what we did from the last section, is there any way to get finite intervals, so not going all the way off into either direction. Well, that's going to require some new operations. First, let's talk about the notation here. So, we could start with this business of a less than x less than b. In plain English, or a little bit better English, we could say this is just all x between a and b. And so the picture would be you mark off A, you mark off B. A has to be to the left of B, and then I would shade in everything in the middle. Then, for interval notation, well, we just start at the left. We come in until we hit points. So this would start at A, stop at B. And then we would put the parentheses in since we're not actually keeping the A or the B. And so this is the different types of language we can use to describe finite intervals. Now, the new operations. So if we have sets, we want to have things that let us build new sets. These are going to come from the operations of AND and OR. Now, AND, there are multiple ways to talk about the AND operation. Notationally, you could use an upside down U. Mathematically, we call this the intersection. In plain English, this is going to be, I have one set, I have another set. I only keep the elements in the sets that are in exactly both. So if you're in one and not the other, we throw you away. We also have OR, so that's written as a U. We call that mathematically the union. Here, we're just going to combine both of our sets. So if I have A and B, I'll take A, I'll take B, I'll put them together. If they overlap, we just count those points that overlap once. But if you're in A or B, you're going to go into the union. For example, let's just work with finite points to get the feel for this. If I call the set A, okay, this is just the four points, one, two, three, four. B is the four points, three, four, five, six. For A and B, those are the points that are common to both A and B. Well, one is not common, two is not common, three is in both, four is in both, five is not common, and six is not in common. So A and B, the intersection of A and B, is just going to be the points three and four. On the other hand, for A or B, the union of A and B, I just take A, one, two, three, four, and then I'll put in everything from B that's not already there. So we have the three and the four, I just add in the five and the six. Let's look at an example. So we have x greater than two and x less than or equal to five. Here, I wanna draw each set on its own number line, and then we wanna compare we have an AND, so we want to find the part that's in common to both. Now, for x greater than 2, we'll mark off the 2. We have an open circle, since there's no equals. Then this says all x to the right of 2, so I fill in everything to the right. For x less than or equal to 5, I'll mark off the 5. We fill it in because we have an equals. And then that says all x to the left of 5. So we'll take everything to the left and shade it in. Now we want to compare both of these sets. For the and, I got to find the part that's common to both. Well, that's going to mean if you were to put a vertical line through 
any place, it's going to have to hit both this one and this one at the same time. So for instance, over here, we're only going to have a point in the second one. Over here, we'll only get points that are in the first one, so neither of those will apply. It'll be the part in the middle that'll be the part in common. That's going to start at 2 and then go all the way to 5. And then we note 2 is not in here, so it won't be in here. But 5 is in both, so we're still going to shade it in. And then that is the picture of our answer. Now, if we translate, this is all x between 2 and 5. So I write it like this. We're going to keep the 5, so I put an equals. In interval notation, we're going to come from the left. We hit 2, we go to 5. We're not keeping the 2, so a parentheses. We're keeping the 5, so a bracket. And then that's everything I could say about the and here. If we were going to do the or, what's the or say to do? We're going to take this set and this set and just put them together. If they overlap, no problem. So in this case, we'll just get everything. And the way we write that, say an interval notation, we would start all the way at the left. So we're out at minus infinity, come all the way to the right, we get plus infinity. If you want to say it in plain English, you would just say all real numbers. Now, let's put this to a checklist. So if we have compound inequalities, so we have linear inequalities, we take two of them, we put them together with an and or an or. The first part's going to be linear inequalities. They may not already be solved, so you'll have to solve them first to isolate the x. Then we'll want to draw the picture, so three lines like over here. The first two are just going to be those from your linear inequality when you isolate. The third is going to depend on whether you're using an and or an or. So and, take the part in common, or take everything and just put it together. And then finally, how you give your answer based on what you're looking for, probably going to be an interval notation. Now, let's try an or. If I have x greater than or equal to minus 2 or x greater than 2, so for here, the x's are already isolated. I have my three lines. For the first linear inequality, what do we have? x greater than or equal to minus 2. So all x to the right of minus 2. And we fill in the circle at minus 2 because we have the equals. For the second linear inequality, x greater than 2, we mark off 2, an open circle because there's no equals. And then we just shade it in all x to the right of 2. Now, I have the or, the or just says, put it all together. So these are going to overlap. This one's actually completely contained in the other one. So it doesn't feel like you're really doing much here. Our answer is going to be, start at minus 2 and then go all the way to the right. So we wind up with an interval notation. Okay, we're going to come from the left, start at minus 2, go all the way off to the right. So that's going to be a minus 2 to infinity. We keep the two, so a bracket, and then infinity always gets a parentheses. Let's consider a more complicated example. So I'll have three times x plus five minus six less than 12, and three x plus four greater than or equal to one minus two. So we'll note, we need to isolate the x in both of these. Typically, for good bookkeeping, you would go off and do these off on the side, then get your answers, bring them back, and do your work with the two lines. If your answer didn't match the back of the book, you're going to do troubleshooting. And since we're solving several problems at once, you want to keep things where they belong, keep things clear. Now. Let's do the second one first. That's 3x plus 4 greater than or equal to a minus 2. So we'll add minus 4 to both sides, get 3x greater than or equal to minus 6. Divide through by 3, we get an x greater than or equal to minus 2. So that one's isolated. For the other one, the first one, I need to distribute the 3 over the x plus 5. So I'll get a 3x plus 15. We subtract the 6, that's going to give me a 9. We move that to the other side, 12 minus 9 is a 3. So I have 3x less than 3. We divide through by 3, and we get x less than 1. 
So now isolated we have x less than 1 and x greater than or equal to a minus 2. We set up our two lines. For the first one we have x less than 1, so all x to the left of 1. I mark off the 1, open circle, and then everything to the left. For the second one, x squared or equal to a minus 2, so all x to the right of minus 2. I mark off the minus 2, I draw the circle, fill it in because of the equals, and then everything to the right. For the and, we're going to take everything that's in both at the same time. So before minus 2, you'll only be in the first set. After 1, you'll only be in the second set, so we only want the things that are in the middle. So that's going to go from minus 2 to 1, and we're going to keep the minus 2. For our answer, in set builder notation, okay, well, what does this look like? This is all x between minus 2 and 1, keeping the minus 2. So I'll have minus 2, less than or equal to x, less than 1. For interval notation, we're going to start at the minus 2 and stop at the 1. We keep the minus 2, so a bracket, and then we're not keeping the 1, so parentheses. And then that, that's our answer. For an example with fractions, let's try this one. So this one's a little bit longish, so i got to stack the statement. I have x plus 2 over 3 minus 2 greater than x minus 4 over 5, or... 3 times 1 minus x greater than 6. So here we've got fractions and a distribution in the second one. Now, we'll just do the fraction one all by itself. We won't try to keep these together. So what are we going to do here? Well, I don't have to stand for fractions. I can clear denominators. So I need to get rid of a 3 and a 5. I'm going to multiply through by 15 or 15 over 1 when it hits a fraction. So we'll have 15 over 1 times x plus 2 over 3 minus 30 greater than 15 over 1 times x minus 4 over 5. We cancel, so that's going to clear out the denominators, and we're going to get 5x plus 2 minus 30 greater than 3x minus 4. We collect our terms. We just solve the linear inequality. We're going to be able to bring that down to an x greater than 4. So that's the first one. For the second one, we just distribute the 3 over the 1 minus x, so 3 minus 3x greater than 6. I'll push the 3x to the other side and then the 6 to the left. We divide everything through by a 3 and we wind up with an x less than a minus 1. Now, they're both isolated, so we can go to the two lines. For the x greater than 4, what do we do? We're going to mark off the 4. That's all x to the right of 4. So we'll shade that in, and that's an open circle. For x less than minus 1, all x to the left of minus 1, we mark off the minus 1, fill in everything to the left. And because we're doing the or, that's the union, we're going to put everything together. So you'll note here in our final answer, we're going to wind up with two pieces. We can denote the two pieces using interval notation. So for the first piece, we're going to start all the way at the left, minus infinity, going all, to, all the way to a minus 1, and then we're not keeping the minus 1, so parentheses. For the second piece, we're going to start at 4, not keeping the 4, and then go all the way off to the right, so plus infinity. And then, because we have two pieces, either you could use the union symbol, the cup, or even a comma is enough, it's going to depend on what your instructor allows. But anyway, note, we can wind up with two pieces when we're doing the union. Now, let's consider a very special case, the double inequality. This would be something like having A less than an expression less than B something like this first example we're going to do. Now, recall a less than x less than b. In theory, what we're supposed to do here is break this up with an and, and then solve the two linear inequalities separately, and then bring them back. If you're comfortable with linear inequalities, well, there's a shortcut we can use, so we're going to focus on that now. 
Let's give you a checklist. First, the idea is everything we do is going to be focused on isolating the X in the middle term. Okay, what's in the box? Common error is going to be to try to work off of the ends. Really, the ends are just along for the ride. Whatever the middle does, the ends are going to come and do it also. And so that's the second point. Whatever I do to the middle, I have to do it three terms at the same time. Then finally, as usual, you'll probably be asked to graph and put your answer in interval notation. So let's look at some examples. So for a first example, we'll take minus five less than or equal to two x minus three, less than seven. We wanna focus on the two x minus three. So I wanna get the x alone in this middle expression. So what are we gonna do? Well, our first trick would be I add three to get rid of the minus three. If I do that, I have to do it to all three parts at once. So what are we gonna get? We'll get a minus two now, less than or equal to a two X, and less than a 10. I have a new double inequality, and same idea for my next step. I focus on the two X. If I wanna get X by itself, we're gonna divide by two. If I divide by two, I have to do it for all three parts at the same time. So we'll get a minus one less than or equal to x less than five. I can't take this any further. The x is isolated, so now I just record our answer. So we're gonna have the interval from minus one to five, the minus one shaded in, the five's an open circle, and then for interval notation, we're going from minus one to five, bracket on the minus one, parentheses on the five. And that's our answer. Next example, of course, the term in the middle may need cleanup, so there could be parentheses in there. Here we'll do one with a fraction. The idea is you just proceed as usual. If it was a single inequality just now, we have to do three times instead of two times. So what we do here, I focus on the middle, here we have options. I could clear fractions and everything, but let's just work with it as it is. I'm gonna add a minus two to the middle to get rid of the two. So I have to do it to all three things at once. So we'll get a zero less than two X over five less than or equal to a two. We look back to the middle. I wanna get the X by itself. Well, we have two X over five. I wanna get rid of the two fifths so we flip it over, I'm gonna multiply everything by a five over two. The zero stays zero, we're less than x now, five over two times two, the twos clear out, leaving me with a five. And then that's our answer, the x is now isolated. We record our answer, so for the graph, we're gonna start at zero and go to five, this is all x between zero and five, so we fill that in. Open circle at the zero, close circle at the five, and then for interval notation, we're going from zero to five, parentheses on the zero, bracket on the five.